Equatorial Guinea versus Ivory Coast, which is better? Hello, the explorers. Welcome to the channel. Without any delay, let's get straight to our comparison. Based on topology, economy, tourism, infrastructure, and sports, we're going to compare these two middle income countries, Ivory Coast and Equatorial Guinea, and see which comes first on Basley. If you're new here, make sure to subscribe and turn the notification bell so you don't miss out our future uploads. Topology Equatorial Guinea is comprised of a mainland territory known as Rio Muni, the island of Bioko, where the capital Malabo is located, and the island of Anabon in the South Atlantic Ocean. It is bordered by Cameroon on the north, Gabon on the south and east, and the Gulf of Guinea on the west, where the island nation of Sao Tome and Principe is located. Bioko and Anobon are volcanic islands that are part of a chain starting with the Cameroon Highlands and outcropping into the Atlantic as far as St. Helena. Rio Muni is a fluvial mainland plateau, except for the sandy shore and the ridges of the Sierra Crystal Range that separate the coast from the interior plateau. The Muni and Tem rivers on the south and north boundaries of Rio Muni are estuaries navigable for about 20 kilometers, while the Mbini River, midway between them, is typical of the cascading streams that drain all of Rio Muni. Bioko has short cascading streams, while Anabon has only storm arroyos. Most of the country, including the islands, is tropical rainforest and home to giant frogs. On Anabon, volcanic deposits restrict agriculture, and the Muni estuarial islands are sandy, but the rest of the country has tropical humus conducive for agriculture. Dense tropical rainforest vegetation prevails throughout Equatorial Guinea. There are 140 species of trees, especially palms and hardwoods. Yams and bananas were introduced by the early inhabitants and became staples. Equatorial Guinea has a tropical climate with distinct wet and dry seasons. Cote d'Ivoire's terrain, on the other hand, can generally be described as a large plateau, rising gradually from sea level in the south to almost 500 meters elevation in the north. The nation's natural resources have made it into a comparatively prosperous nation in the African economy. The southeastern region of the country is marked by coastal inland lagoons that start at the Ghanaian border and stretch 300 kilometers along the eastern half of the coast. The southern region, especially the southwest, is covered with dense tropical moist forest. The eastern Guinean forest extends from the Sassandra River across the south-central and southeast portion of Côte d'Ivoire and east into Ghana, while the western Guinean lowland forest extends west from the Sassandra River into Liberia and southeastern Guinea. The mountains of Diwit Montagne region in the west of the country near the border with Guinea and Liberia are home to the Guinean Montagne Forest. The Guinean forest savanna mosaic belt extends across the middle of the country from east to west and is the transition zone between the coastal forest and the interior savannas. The forest savanna variety interlaces forest, savanna, and grassland habitats. Northern Côte d'Ivoire is part of the West Sudanian savanna, a savanna and scrubland zone of lateritic or sandy soils with vegetation decreasing from south to north. The terrain is mostly flat to undulating plains, with mountains in the northwest. The lowest elevation in Côte d'Ivoire is at sea level on the coast. The highest elevation is Mount Nimba, at 1,752 meters in the far west of the country, along the border with Guinea and Liberia. The climate of Côte d'Ivoire is generally warm and humid, ranging from equatorial in the southern coast to tropical in the middle and semi-arid in the far north. Both of these countries have amazing topologies, but that of Ivory Coast is slightly better. 
Though pre-independence, Equatorial Guinea counted on cocoa and coffee production for hard currency earnings, the discovery of large offshore petroleum reserves in 1996 and its subsequent exploitation have contributed to a dramatic increase in government revenue. Equatorial Guinea has become the third largest oil producer in sub-Saharan Africa, with oil production at 360,000 barrels per day. The cocoa and coffee plantations were nationalized and destroyed during Marcia's and Gamer's years in power. Timber exploitation, farming and fishing are also major components of GDP. Subsistence farming predominates. The deterioration of the rural economy under successive brutal regimes have diminished any potential for agriculture-led growth. The GDP of Equatorial Guinea is estimated to be $10.50 billion as of 2021. Ivory Coast, on the other hand, maintaining close ties to France since independence in 1960. Diversification of agriculture for export and encouragement of foreign investment has made Cote d'Ivoire one of the most prosperous of the tropical African states. Although in recent years Cote d'Ivoire has been subject to the global marketplace for its coffee and cocoa as the main export crops, along with tropical wood, timber and tuna. Internal corruption makes life difficult for the farmers and growers and for those exporting into foreign markets. The GDP of Ivory Coast is estimated to be $62 billion as of 2021. From the GDP of both countries, it is obvious that the economy of Ivory Coast is by far better than that of Equatorial Guinea, and thus around for Ivory Coast. Tourism Ivory Coast's tourism industry has developed significantly since the early 70s. The country had 11,374 beds in 7,786 hotel rooms and a 70% occupancy rate in early years. As time advanced, there were 301,039 arriving tourists, including more than 73,000 from Germany, France and the UK. Beaches, tourist villages and photo safaris through wildlife preserves are some of the main attractions. Ivory Coast is a true geographical and cultural blend of Africa, with its forests and savanna, and a diversity of ethnic groups, guardian of a variety of folklores, craft industry and religions. Ivory Coast has a varied range of tourist products, which gives the visitor the opportunity to enjoy to the utmost. Because Equatorial Guinea has undergone many years of international isolation, its tourism industry is much undeveloped, with limited hotel space available in Malabo and Bata. The few attractions include the Spanish colonial architecture of Malabo, the beaches, and the tropical rainforests. Comparing tourism in Ivory Coast against Equatorial Guinea is quite biased, given that Ivory Coast has better geographic features and has actually invested in their tourism industry. So, this round still goes to Ivory Coast. Infrastructure Ivory Coast invested remarkably in its transport system. Transport infrastructures are much more developed than they are in other West African countries, despite the crisis that restrained their maintenance and development. Since its independence in 1960, Ivory Coast put an emphasis on increasing and modernizing the transport network for humans as well as for goods. Major infrastructures of diverse nature were built including railways, roads, waterways and airports. In spite of the crisis, neighboring countries still strongly depend on the Ivorian transport network for importing, exporting and transiting their immigrants to Ivory Coast. The nation's railway system is part of a 1,260-kilometer-long route that links the country to Burkina Faso and Niger. 1,156 kilometers of railroad links Abidjan to Ouagadougou, capital of Burkina Faso. Even though Ivory Coast is still developing and it's common to see slums and poor neighborhoods, this country has got some impressive and eye-catching structures and estates. Also, the cities in Ivory Coast, although not all, are really well-planned and organized. 
Equatorial Guinea, on the other hand's infrastructure is generally old and in poor condition. Surface transport is extremely limited at present, with little more than 700 kilometers of paved roads. The African Development Bank is helping to improve the paved routes from Malabo to Luba and Riaba. The Chinese are currently undertaking a project to link Mongomo to Bata on the mainland. And the European Union is financing an interstate road network linking Equatorial Guinea to Cameroon and Gabon. Road maintenance is often inadequate. Concluding on infrastructure, we think Equatorial Guinea will need to step her game up to compete with Ivory Coast in this particular sector. And no doubt, this round goes again to Ivory Coast. Hopefully, sports will save Equatorial Guinea from this mess. Association football is the most popular sport in Equatorial Guinea. It was during the Spanish colonialism that football arrived to Equatorial Guinea. Football is now a very popular sport in the country. Recently, the national team made a few surprising results. In the qualification for the FIFA World Cup in 2006, Togo was beaten 1-0. And in the qualification for the African Cup of Nations, they beat Cameroon 1-0. Equatorial Guinea co-hosted the 2012 Africa Cup of Nations with Gabon and was the host of the 2015 Africa Cup of Nations. Equatorial Guinea first participated at the Olympic Games in 1984 and has sent athletes to compete in every summer Olympic Games since then. The nation has never participated in the Winter Olympic Games. As of 2016, no athlete from Equatorial Guinea has ever won an Olympic medal. Ivory Coast clubs, on the other hand, have won six continental trophies, two in the African Champions League, three cup victories, and a cup success of the African Football Confederation. It should be added that Ivory Coast has also won several small sub-regional tournaments in the club or with its national team. It seems Ivory Coast still beats Equatorial Guinea in sports, and thus taking the trophy for this comparison. Five for Ivory Coast, and zero for Equatorial Guinea. There you have it, the explorers. Equatorial Guinea versus Ivory Coast. Which was better? If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe and leave a comment.